Hello, I'm H. John Wellhouse, and welcome to another Spring Training Insider Edition of Locked on Astros. We're going to hear from Dusty Baker and Jeremy Pena right now. Alvarez, it's a high drive center field. Veer leans back. This game is turned upside down. There's the runner. Fly ball down the right field line. Tucker comes on. Kyle Tucker. This time they finish the job. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. Hey there everybody, welcome to Locked On Astros, I'm H-Town Wheelhouse. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at H-Town Wheelhouse. You can find me at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always strows. You can find the show at Locked on Astros on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And remember, you can get us anywhere you get your podcast. It's free and easy to listen to. After you make us your first listen, make sure you make Locked on MLB Prospects your second listen with host ML, with host um, Lindsey Crosby, who is a minor league baseball encyclopedia. That's right. So I want to get right into it. Dusty Baker's words on his um, just meeting with the press before they had their full squad scrimmage today at the field and just talking about the players coming here. He talks a little bit about Jordan Alvarez. So let's listen to what the skipper had to say. Plan to do with him no. from your point of view. Well, from my point of view, you, you know, it's up to him. Kinda, you know, when it, hopefully his hand feels better, and uh, you know he don't really know how he hurt it. But I mean, sometimes, sometimes you wake up. If you're a ball player, sometimes you wake up sore or hurting. So we just have to, uh, uh, you know, see how, you know, see how it comes out. You've been there and done that. How tough is that for a hitter when the hand is? Well, it's tough, but man, we got six weeks. You know what I mean? So, I mean. He did pretty good last year. <laughs> Sometimes with, with 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 a hurt hand, and uh, you know, hopefully it subsides and, and he feels better. I mean, now not the time to panic. I mean, if you know me, never is the time to panic. You said rest That's was the good. best way to to heal it. Mm-hmm. What point will you talk about maybe a, a plan? I mean, 162 is a, a miracle. Yeah, but that's six weeks away. You know, we'll see if it hadn't gotten any better by the time we get there or, or, or what we see. So. You know, um, <clears throat> uh, I'd like to think I have healing power, but I don't. You know, so we just we got one of the best training staffs around, and I'll put him in the hands of them and our doctors. About Lance, anything? Anything? Uh, no, not, not yet. You know, he's feeling better. I mean, uh, you can, you know, he's laughing a little bit more and uh, in, in a great frame of mind. First day with the full squad. I know you've had a bunch of guys here, but this is day one. What is that like for you? Well, I mean, this is like, I mean, you know, it's like a, a king with his army around him. You know what I mean? And I like my army, <laughs> even though I'm a Marine. <laughs> All the same team at some point. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> now, other is staying healthy. Uh, what do you expect from Alvarez if he is healthy this season? I don't know. Just uh, um you know, I don't put those kind of expectations on, on guys because you put that kind of pressure on yourself. You don't get off to a good start. Then you say, okay, then I got to do more this month. And then the next thing you know, so you just, uh, uh, I don't put the expectations, on, especially on the young guys. You know, I mean, sky's the limit. We just got to keep him healthy. You know, and if we can keep him healthy and hopefully he can play a few more games than he played last year. You know, I mean, we missed him and we missed Michael at the same time. So, I'm just hoping, you know, health is the key. It sounds corny, but it, I mean, it's true. Has anybody else showed up with any health issues that you weren't expecting? Uh, no, n- not really. I mean, uh, no, I'm just hoping we don't have any come up. I mean, you know, you're going to have them. I'm just hoping we don't have many, or at least you start the season healthy. Is everybody here except for Phil Montero? Yes. Yeah. going to start. All right, there you have it. Dusty Baker in his words talking about Jordan Alvarez, talking about just having everybody here in camp. 
And it's just great to hear, you know, Dusty Baker loves having his players back. It's everything's getting back into full swing and they have their first game this Saturday. So um, with that being said, let's go to the Jeremy Payne interviews, the first half of his interview, about four minutes of it. He already has to say about training, about what he did this off season. Um, most of the interview, you can hear those asking Jeremy Pena questions. He comes through very clearly. I know in the past, some of the audio has been a little muffled. So I tried to make that volume adjustment. I don't know how much it helped or how much it worked, but hopefully you should be able to hear the questions. But if not, Jeremy Pena does a very good job of letting you know what it is he's talking about. Let's watch this first four minute segment. I'll kind of break that down a little bit, and then we'll get to the last part before we let you go. Remember, we are your team every day. Go Strohs. Let's listen to Jeremy Pena. This year, as opposed to coming in last year. I mean, the focus is the same. The focus is still to use this time to get better, you know, and uh, yeah, get ready for the season. Are you more confident now than you were this time last year? I wouldn't say confidence has ever been an issue. You know, I've always been confident playing this game. And, uh, you know, I would say a little more comfortable with the guys. Um, but we have new pieces, and, uh, you know, they're uh, easy to come in. Yeah. Jeremy, when you look at your season last year, what do you think was the turning point, especially offensively, that led to that surge in the postseason? I mean, we worked a lot during the season. You know, even though we weren't getting the results, you know, we still put the work in in the cage every single day, and we kind of stayed true to the process. And it was only a matter of time. You know, it's uh, we're already playing a hard enough sport, and you just gotta, you know, put the work in, and then just go out and have fun and compete. And that's what I try to do all year. Jimmy, what did you learn about Astros fans these last three, four, or five months? I mean, we have the best fans. You know, we have the best fans. You know, I saw it in season. You know, I didn't have to wait till we won the World Series to see how great our fans are. Now these guys showed up every single day. It didn't matter, you know, Tuesday game, they were there. What was it like to have so much great things happen for you so quickly? I mean, you just playing the game you love. You know, that's always been the focus. The focus has always been to keep the main thing, the main thing, which is to play the game at the end of the day. And, uh, you know, just to be able to accomplish a dream of mine, which was to play in the big leagues, it was, it was awesome. There's so many guys that play this game for so many years that don't sniff a World Series. And you did that in, in one year. I mean, it was special. It was special. Like I said, these guys were already winners before I even showed up. These guys had been doing it way before I showed up, you know, and uh, I was just happy to be a part of it. How do you feel you about the up? chef being banned? The chef being banned? We'll see. We'll see. I think, uh, you know, infielders are going to be able to showcase some athleticism, uh, more athleticism, but we'll, we'll see. Jeremy, when you look back at last season and the time you spent there in that middle infield with a guy like uh, Altuve, reflecting back on that and the time you spent with him and learned from him, can you just reflect on what that meant to you as far as growth as a player? Of course. I mean, Jose Altuve had been a mentor of mine since, you know, the first day we met. He, uh, I learned so much from him, you know, not just him, all the other guys as well, you know, Bregman. Diaz, he's no longer with us, but he was a big part of my development. Mm -hmm. You know, Yuli, he's no longer here right now, but he was also a big part of my development. And uh, and I feel like I just came into already great infield. Did it help being able to lean on them during your rookie year where you're learning so much and all the pressure replacing a guy like Carlos and having those veterans around you supportive? Of course, you know, they, they kept me grounded the whole year. You know, you see how they show up every single day and put the work in every single day and you just gravitate towards them. So he said replacing Carlos. If you, if you were I didn't to say give, that. He said that. Right, right. It's like he said. <laughs> if you were to give advice now that you did it once to someone replacing a popular all-star player, what like what did you do well last year in your mentally? What advice would you give someone else that's replacing a star? Like I said, I never looked at it that way. I just saw it as I'm going to be the shortstop for the Houston Astros, and I'm going to be playing along all these guys. You know, So the goal was always just to come in, do my job, and win baseball games. So the advice would be sort of be yourself. Play your game. Yeah, be, yourself. be yourself. Play your game and, uh, you know, let, every, let everything else take care of itself. What's the things that you've done that you worked on this offseason to be even better in 2020? So I worked more of, a little bit more on my body. And, uh, you know, last year, towards the end of the year, I felt like I was getting a little tired. 
And uh, so this year we worked on a couple things to uh, know more routine based, kind of knowing what I have to do in season to stay on top of my game. What did it mean to you to win those two awards in the first season? Yeah, so there you go. We'll finish up the rest of this interview here in a second. He talked about the fans. He talked about his routine in the offseason. Um, basically, if you've seen his tricep, the guy has put on some serious muscle in the offseason. And he said he's working so that he doesn't get tired too quickly. And apparently that was something that he dealt with, some fatigue. You know, he is young. Um, he is, I mean, I guess in his mid-20s, I guess young compared to maybe myself or some of the people watch a show. Maybe not ultra young in baseball years. But he's still got a lot of tread on the tires. Um, I love how he really does. I mean, he does a good job deflecting the question. What's it like replacing Carlos Correa? Or what do you tell a player replacing Carlos Correa or a type, a all-star player like that? And he just basically debunks that. He's like, look, I'm that's, that's not me. Like I am Jeremy Pena. I'm the shortstop. And I'm not here to replace anybody. I never was. I've never lost my confidence. And, and so I just absolutely love what he had to say here. Um, this kid's got the right hand on his shoulders. You can clear, clearly see that his being raised by a former major league player and his dad, Geronimo Pena, um, has helped him big time. He's got a great big family support around him. So let's watch the last part of this interview. Thanks to... Uh... No, more routine based, kind of knowing what I have to do in season to stay on top of my game. What did it mean to you to win those two awards in the postseason? And then have Reggie Jackson present you those first best drop to ever win. It was special because we had so many players that were deserving of the award. You know, Presley, you know, we don't talk about him enough, but you know, Presley shut the doors. You know, he did it all year. He did it once again in the playoffs. You know, Framber, he was great all year, great in the playoffs. So it, it was just special to be the one to receive the award, but it could have could have went to any of our players. Jeremy, a uh, back-to-back -back champions hadn't happened in over 20 years, 23 years, I think, something like that. Yet projections are you guys are going to be there. Uh, it's, walk us through the mindset going in when you know you've got that bulls on your back and you guys are the favorite team. I mean, the mindset is to keep getting better, you know, keep winning ball games and. Uh, yeah, make it to the playoffs and have a deep round again. So uh, that's always been the mentality. We have a winning, winning culture here, and everyone's on the same page. So what you told us that confidence has never been a, a problem. Obviously, pressure didn't seem to be a problem either, especially in October. How do you deal with the outside noise? So many people reminding you about last year, maybe setting some expectations. What, how do you compartmentalize that stuff? You just turn the page. You know, last year is last year. You know, we have a new year coming up you know we already enjoyed it uh, we celebrated but now it's time to you know lock back in and now we have a new goal which is to go back and hopefully win it again what was the success like for your family especially your dad who played the big leagues and the rest of your family as well I mean, it's actually special that I get to share it with my father you know both being big leaguers now you know he always had his stories when he played in the big leagues now I have some stories I could share with him and uh, it's special what are your expectations for yourself in your second season? Just keep improving, you know, be consistent, you know, on both sides of the game, defense and offense, you know, and uh, yeah, the goal is to stay healthy, play the full year and help the team. Do you like adjust your offseason training at all differently than now that you have a year under your belt? And, and know, you know what to expect, I guess, in the big A little bit, you know, I, uh, I would say I was a little more focused and I knew things I had to work on. I wasn't just working to work. It was actually working on the right things. And um, yeah, that's been, that's gonna be the, the goal this whole year. You know, putting intent behind every single practice, behind every single swing, behind every single rep. Are you um, about the same weight as you came in last year? Are you bigger, stronger? I, mean, I am three pounds heavier. Mm -hmm. Some people on Twitter would say it's gone to your triceps. <laughs> <laughs> what is your philosophy about lifting weights? What is your philosophy about lifting weights the way you do? I say the weight room could be a good thing, but we can also use it in the wrong way. You know, we want to use the weight room to improve, become better athletes, uh, develop better patterns, but we also don't want to hurt ourselves in the weight room. You know, we are, at the end of the day, we're baseball players, and, you know, the goal is not to 
lift a thousand pounds in the weight room. The goal is to go out and perform on the field. So you always have to keep that in mind. At the end of the day, we're baseball players. Do you do things specifically for, for triceps? I mean, is that, and how does that, you know, sort of, I mean, is that is that a muscle you focus on or is this something that's part of your whole routine? Or? I just thank my father, genetics, you know, good genetics. That's yeah, good it. <laughs> Jimmy, what can you say about, about Dusty? I mean, he had just so much confidence in you last year. And I imagine you guys probably had some conversations throughout the, the year. And he's a World Series champion. What can you tell us about the kids? I mean, he's, you know, my first manager in the big leagues. And, you know, he was great to me since the first day. You know, he... Gave me all the confidence in the world. You know, even when I was struggling last year, he was still, you know, playing me. He was still giving me advice. He was still encouraging me to keep playing my game. You know, keep playing hard and have fun. So, you know, shout out to him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you. Jeremy, thanks for your time. Yeah. All right, and there you have it. Jeremy Pena continuing to talk about just all aspects of the game, how he's prepared for this season. And he got a lot of questions. Um, basically, the reporters were like, so about those triceps? And Jeremy Pena is like, good genetics. Um, John McClain at the end asked him about his workout routine. And I love what Jeremy Pena said because this is, I think, really important. And I'm not going to dive into this too deeply because I, I'm not a personal trainer or an expert in the gym. I know, I obviously, I don't know. Maybe I can show you some pictures from a couple of years ago when I was a little bit more bulked up and in shape. But he said in working out, they he doesn't think that as a baseball player, he should work out so much that he causes injuries. And um, I can totally respect that because you will see these athletes, these younger athletes bulk up. And we saw Bregman two years ago. Um, he, he came in, he had, he had gained about, I don't know, it was like 20 something pounds of muscle. And then he started having a lot of soft tissue issues. Now, I don't know if the flexibility played a part or the working out played a part in his lower trunk due to his 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 upper half being heavier with more muscle, because I'm obviously not the team physician. I'm not going to diagnose something I don't know much about. But it seemed like those injuries coincided with his bulking up. Jeremy Pena seems to be moving, I think, a little bit more freer when you watch him take ground balls. And I know they're just routine and they're just out there warming up. But to me, last year he looked a little bit stiff. And this year when he's running, he looks a little bit more flexible. He probably worked on that. And for someone to be aware of who they are in their in the physical shape they're in, where they are with their body, where they are with working out in relation to what your job is as a baseball player, I think is important and says a lot about Jeremy Pena, the athlete that will pay dividends for the Astros down the road for years to come. So there's Jeremy Pena in his own words. He's a World Series champion. He said it helped having the veterans in his corner, having the infield that he has. And this has just been another special edition of a Locked on Astros podcast. We like to bring you these things during spring training. Um, hopefully during the season, we can bring you some stuff like this, maybe with some press conferences after games. But I want to remind you to make sure that you make FanDuel your go-to for sports wagering needs. FanDuel is the number one sports book in all of America. It is our choice here at the Locked On Network. And since the NBA season is halfway through, you can go and be a new customer and have a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back. If your first bet doesn't win, then you can bet on everything from money line to points scored and three pointers drained. That's right. Plus FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with same game parlay. So don't miss this chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets. When you get fanduel.com slash locked on, when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more, make every moment with FanDuel an official sports betting partner moment of the NBA. So thank you for tuning in to Locked on Astros once again. I just wanted to show you guys the interviews that I was able to get a hold of, of both Dusty Baker and Jeremy Pena. Remember to subscribe to us and listen to us on, on the way to work, on the way home, wherever you get your podcast. We are your team every day. Go Strohs.